a story map together yesterday. Let's use it today to review our story and then we'll read our story again and we'll probably notice some new ideas and new details. Okay, so let's look and remember. The first thing we talked about was our setting of our story. And remember, that's just the place where the story happens. And we said this story, the ugly pumpkin, really happened in a pumpkin patch for the most part. So we drew our pumpkin patch in our setting box. Then we talked about the character, which is the people or the animals that the story is about. In this case, it's a pumpkin, isn't it? That is our main character who our story is mostly about. He's called the ugly pumpkin because he doesn't quite fit in, right? He's a weird shape and that makes him feel sad. So we drew a sad face for him. When we talked about the problem of our story, it was that the ugly pumpkin didn't feel like he fit in, right? He didn't have any friends because he didn't look like the other pumpkins and nobody wanted to pick him. But his solution was, how he fixed his problem was that he happened across a squash patch where they only grew squash and he figured out that he was really a squash and that's why he never fit in with the pumpkins. Let's read our story again and when we reread it today, I want you to think about our squash. Later today, I'm going to ask you to draw two pictures of our squash we call the ugly pumpkin. One's going to show his face when he thought he was a pumpkin, and the other will show his face when he knew he was a squash. Let's read our story. The Ugly Pumpkin, written and illustrated by Dave Horowitz. I am the Ugly Pumpkin. As you can plainly see, of 100,000 pumpkins, none are quite like me. The words on this page are telling us that the pumpkin is different. The illustration is showing us how is he different. What details are in the illustration that aren't in the words? Look at the illustrations of the ugly pumpkin next to the illustration of some of the other pumpkins. We can tell that he's not the same because he's not the same shape. He's almost the shape of like a capital I, isn't he? And the pumpkins are round sphere shapes, aren't they? So we know he's not the same shape. I can also see that he has legs and arms and that makes him different too. His face looks different too. These pumpkins have jack-o'-lantern faces and he has just a normal looking face, doesn't he? Since early in October, I've been waiting to get picked, but each time things start looking up, I end up getting tricked. A skeleton came for pumpkins one bright and crispy day. I asked if I could get a ride. He laughed and said, no way. And when I said, it's getting late and I don't have a home. He rolled his eye and said, goodbye. And left me all alone. The words on this page are telling us that the skeleton left and the pictures show us how he left. But I want you to look at the illustration of the sad pumpkin for me. We can tell that he's sad by looking at his face because he's frowning. But I'm wondering why he's drawn in the picture this way. Well, he's drawn in the rear view mirror because you can see that the skeleton is driving away and he's leaving the pumpkin behind, meaning he didn't take him with him. So I walked into November where I happened on some trees. I asked if I could stay a while and this time I said, please. The trees all started smiling and then one finally spoke. Take off your boots and spread your roots. Another cruel joke. I am the ugly pumpkin, I shouted to the sky. And then it started raining, so I began to cry. I 
I took shelter in a garden that was overrun with squash. The pumpkin was sad because he was alone. Here it says he took shelter in a garden. I think that took shelter means came to be safe from the rain. Sometimes I have to use the words and illustrations when I see words I don't know. I noticed something very odd and then thought, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm a squash. At last it was Thanksgiving and I found where I fit in. Now you know my story, so let the feast begin. What's happening in this illustration? Can you figure out what the word feast may mean? Let's use some clues from the illustrations. Look at this table. It is full of food. In this illustration I can see that they have a lot of food to eat. I see turkey, I see bread, I see vegetables, sweet potatoes. Looks really delicious, doesn't it? And everyone's eating. So I bet when it says the feast began, that the word feast means a really big meal. I used the illustration to figure out that word that I didn't know. Happy Thanksgiving. One word from our book is the word finally. What's the word? Finally. Finally means after waiting a long time. In the book, it says that the tree finally began to speak. That means that the pumpkin waited a long time before it happened. Finally means after waiting. You can use that word too. Like you might say, I finally learned to ride a bike. What's the word again? That's right, finally. Another word from this book is plain. What's the word? Plain. If something is plain, it's there for everybody to see. Like my desk or my computer is in plain sight. In our book, it says, I'm the ugly pumpkin as you can plainly see. That means that anyone who looks at him can see that he's ugly. If something is plain, it's there for everybody to see. You could use that word too, like you could say, it's plain that my friend is a really good runner because they're so fast. What's that word again? Plain. All right, here are two parts of a sentence. So let's use what we know about sentences and put them together in the right order. So we know we need a subject. A subject tells what the sentence is mostly about. So I'm gonna read each part, and when you think you hear the subject, you give it a thumbs up, okay? And we're gonna put that part first to see whether our sentence makes sense. All right, the first part says, was really a squash. The next part says, the pumpkin. Which one tells what the sentence would be mostly about? Was really a squash? The pumpkin. The pumpkin, right? The pumpkin tells a person, a place, or a thing that our sentence can be mostly about. So I'm gonna put it right here on our line, okay? Now, that means that we've got to find the predicate, right? The only part we have left was really a squash tells what the pumpkin does, right? So now we have a sentence, okay? Let's see if our sentence makes sense. The pumpkin was really a squash. Well, that's right, we have two parts, right? But I know that to have a really good sentence, I need to start with a capital letter, so I'm gonna make this T a capital, and I need a period at the end, which is really just a little dot, right? So here's my little dot. All right, so now we have a really good sentence, don't we? Here's another sentence. It doesn't start with a subject this time, though, and that's because it's a question. It starts with a question word, why, and it ends with a question mark, not a period. Okay, over here I've made a list of people or animals that could be happy. This sentence says, why was the squash happy? So over here I have people or animals that could be happy too, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use them in our sentence to change who the sentence is about. So our question says, why was the squash happy? Now we're gonna change our sentence and it says, why was the, let's make it mom. And now our sentence says, why was the mom happy? Let's try this one. 
dog. Why was the dog happy? Let's try another one. Let's try cat this time. And now our sentence says, why was the cat happy? All right, now try to read this one with me. We've changed it to doctor. So what does our sentence say now? Read it with me. Why was the doctor happy? Good job, guys.